Hello, this is a demonstration video of how to build a DFA, a deterministic finite automata, uh, to recognize a string in a stream of text that's coming in. So in this demonstration, I'm going to think about the conceptual idea of building a DFA to recognize a string and then converting it to C code and then testing it to make sure that we have done the right thing. So the first step is to understand that a DFA is a machine that what we want to do is to build a machine that can recognize, say, a specific pattern, in this case, nano. So this machine, let's suppose that's C code inside this machine. When you send a text string like this, it has this substring nano, and it's going to say we recognize that. So here's another text string with a substring nano, recognize that. And this one has NAN, but never NANO. So it'll say after all this, it'll say no. What we like to do is to build a machine that can recognize all of the patterns in this, in this, uh, in this tree. So thinking about this machine, so here's a design of that machine. It is a state machine, so we have a number of states, and each state is, as the stream comes in, the machine will go to from one state to another, or maybe remain in the same state. So let's suppose you, are, you have a start state and a state n. This means that if you're in the state n, you have seen a character n prior to that. You if you're in state NA, you have seen the characters N and A prior to that. Similarly, if you're in NAN, you have seen the characters NAN prior to that. If you're in NANO, this we call an accept state. That means we have seen the pattern NANO. So in this machine, let's see how it works. You're in the state start state. And if you see an N, you go to the next state. That means you have seen an N prior to that. Otherwise, you will just stay there. Any other character, you're going to stay there. When you're in state N, if you see an N, you can stay there. You don't have to go back here. You can stay in state N. So if you see an N and another N, that means you have seen two Ns. You may see another N and another N and so on. So you can stay in this state. You see anything other than N, you must go back to the start state. Suppose you see an A in the N state, and then you go into the NA state. So in this case, if you see an N, you will stay here. If you see an A, you go here. If you see anything other than N and A, you would go back to the start. So when you're in the NA state, if you see anything other than um, if you see an N, you would go to NAN. That's the next state. But if you see anything other than N, you're going to have to go back to the start state and start all over again. And when you're in the state NAN, if you see an O, you go to the accept state. If you see another N, then you can go back to N. This means that the last thing you have seen is an N. In fact, if you see another N, that means you know that you have seen N-A-N-N. If you see an A, that's an interesting one because we have seen an N-A-N and you see another A, this means that we have seen N-A uh, as last two characters. So we can go back to the start N-A and wait. Maybe perhaps we get the N again. And if you see anything other than any of those things like it's not an O, it's not an N, it's not an A, so we go back to the start state. So when we reach this state, we have recognized a string. And if you like, you can, if you want to recognize all the strings, once you recognize that, you can go back to the start state. So any other character, you can put this back here. So that's the state machine that we want to conceptually think about and program and test. Now we're going to take a look at how to take our picture of a DFA that is supposed to recognize a string nano or pattern nano 
and convert that to a text, a, a, a textual representation. Now, this is a step between getting into the C chord and going from graphical representation into a textual representation. And then from here, we should be able to directly translate this into C chord. If you really think about it, that uh, each state, like a start, N, N, A, all of those states, are really functions. And then they take a character as an input and go to another state. So you can think of a function that takes a character as an input and then returns another state. And that's what we're going to do. So if you compare the, these two things side by side now, you can see that at the start state, to get an N, you're going to the state N. This is capital N. Otherwise, you're going to just stay in the start state. If you're in this state n, this is the function n, you get another n. Notice that we are staying in n. If you get an a, you're going to an a. Otherwise, you're going back to the start state. So all of the other things are represented the same way. So this is an important step before writing the code. Take your picture and co correctly translate that into a textual representation of the DFA. So now our goal is to take this textual representation to C code. That's what we're going to do. So I have an Emacs, uh, I have a bash terminal here that I'm working on and I'm using Emacs as my uh, editor. So I'm going to create a file called nano.c that will code this DFA into a, a source file. Now, I have done most of the work, so I'm just going to demonstrate and go over the parts of this nano.c. And let's take a look at what we are trying to do here. So in this case, we do have, we're going to write a C program. So this is just comments. So you have some comments that are at the file level comments that are important. And then we include some libraries, the standard I.O., input-output libraries, and standard lib that may or may not be needed, but we can, if they're not needed, we should remove them, but for now, I'm just going to keep them. And so here's a, <clears throat> this one is very important, that our, I want to name my state, so I'm going to call them state start, state end, state NA, and so on. And I'm going to have an enum type, which is going to represent these names. So if I have a variable of type enum state, I will be able to define and initialize those variables to any one of these things here. Um, and then I have functions that, as I discuss, the, the states, the textual representation gives you a direct translation of these things. So for example, Start is a function that will take a character. So we assume that if you're in start state, then you have the function start. If you take a character, and then it'll figure out where to go. So this is the return type is the enum state. So for example, if you're in the state start, and you get another, any character other than n, you will stay there. So for example, if this is not, not n, your enum state would be start state. That's how it works. If this is n, then you would go, you would return and go into the state n. So that's how it works. Then we have two global variables, uh, as c, which is allow me to, which will allow me to get, read something from the standard in. And then we have a DFA state that will define the state of my machine at any given time. So now we're going to start converting these things. Now, by the way, these are called function prototypes. They kind of help you think about functions at the high level before you write the details. So now I'm going to write the implementation details here. So let's write the function start. So how does the start work? So all I have to do is convert this representation into code. It says that if your character is an n, all right, so you might wonder that C is an integer, 
n is a character, but in fact, this is a number. This is the ASCII value of the lowercase n. So it's fine to do that comparison. So if C is an n, then we say, okay, let's go to state n. If you see an n, you're in state start, and you see an n, you go to state n. So you return the DFA state. Uh, if, if you see an n, or if you don't see an n, you will stay in the start. You haven't changed the state start. So that's where you start uh, the process. And then if you're in the state n, this is your other function called n, which takes an n. This is essentially I'm converting this code into C code. So if C is n, if you get a character n, let's make the state n. If you get a character a, let's make the state na. If you get anything other than that, let's make the character state start. So whatever happens here, that's all we're going to return to that. Now let's take a look at the other one, state na. If you see an n, you go to state nan. If you see anything other than that, you're going to stay in the start state. And we return the DFS state. If you're in NAN, I'm converting this code directly into C code, this representation. If C is an N, let's go to N. If C is an A, let's go to NA. If C is O, let's go to NANO. Otherwise, go back to the start. So I should have, uh, yep, this is something I forgot to do. So let's just say that else we go to DFS state is equal to uh, state start, state start, okay, state start, and then we return. So we convert this one directly into that. Now, then let's write the nano state. When you're in the nano state, we're going to write the message, I'm in the nano state, and uh, if you get an N, in the nano state uh, because if you're in the nano state now if you're here you already accept it now you have you've been given a character now if character is an n you can go to the state n and start all over again otherwise you can stay in the dfs state uh, start otherwise it's going to be state start so we return the dfs state you might be able to make this more efficient but the idea is that I wanted to show you how that's done. Now we need a main function. So in the main function, we must write the program reads characters from standard in and writes to standard out. It's very important to uh, describe your main function. The stream of input characters read process using a DFA looking for all patterns of nano. We are only recognizing the lowercase. So the way this machine works is that we call the get character and we assign it to C, which is of character type, but get character returns an integer. So we take the integer and convert it uh, compared to end of five, which is typically minus one in our machines. And so if you test your DFS state, if it's state start, then let's call the function start. If it's state end, let's call the function end. If it's NA, let's call the function NA. If it's NAN, let's call the function NAN. If otherwise, let's call the function nano. Now, these are some debugging statements that we have written, but they're not necessarily needed. So I can comment them out. Let's comment them out here. So next, we will see how this is going to work. OK, so now that we have written the uh, source code, Let's make sure that our code is correct. So I have two terminals open here. They are both in the same directory. One is an edit window that I can edit the file and save it. And this one is just testing. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to compile this code using GCC 217. Uh, GCC 217 is a specialized compiler specifically for this class. It, does all the testing with the warnings and other things. So if you compile it, you will recognize, you will notice that there's an error here. It says DFS state is not defined. It's undeclared. 
Uh, so it's in line 72. So I'm just going to go to line 72. Uh, there are other ways to do it. So here it is. Okay, if I see the problem, so that should be a DFA. So uh, I will save it and recompile it. Now this time it seems to have done it correctly. So now I got a bunch of files in here that are test files. So for example, if I type cat uh, nano text that text, you will see that it is just a line of text that has a nano in it. So in order to test that, my executable is called nano. So I'm just going to type nano and I'm going to do a file redirection. Notice that the this thing takes input from the standard in. I could type it in and press Control D to indicate the end of the string or in the file. Or I could just make it uh, direct a, a, a text string which is in a file to that. It is much easier when you do that when you're doing testing. So let's suppose that I do that. Okay, so it recognized this nano. So let's look at the next file which has a bunch of nanos in there. One and somewhere else maybe there's another one here so let's see if it's going to recognize that so I'm going to uh, test my code with that so it recognizes two nanos that's good so let's look at the nano text 3 oops uh, let's look at the nano text 3 first so I'm going to look at nano text 3 so let me clear this so let's look at nano text 3 so here's the nano text array. This is kind of a tricky one because you have nano and a nano and a nano. So it should recognize three patterns. So let's try to run our executable with nano text. Good. So it does work with three patterns. Now, obviously, this doesn't guarantee that your code is correct. So you must do other tests, like, for example, if you have something that's empty, for, for example, a file that has no characters, a file that has maybe one character or two characters, right? A file that has a lot of characters but has no nano in it, a file that only contains nano. So there are lots of things that you can do to test your code. So that's a good start. So if you go back and look at this code here, um, we can slowly go through this again. Um, and to see how this can be helpful in developing uh, code for an assignment. So we have uh, enum state defined. That's an enumerated type. We have a bunch of prototypes. We have two variables, two global variables, DFS state and all that. And then we convert the code into functions, uh, convert the, the textual representation into functions. So these are the functions of state and state NA and uh, state NAN and then state nano and then print state is just a testing function and then here's your main loop that's going to take you through the file and uh, do the things that you want to do. So hopefully this will be helpful in developing or building uh, DFA. Uh, first you draw the picture of the DFA, then we convert it to a textual representation, and then finally we have the code, and then finally we tested it. And that's the uh, sort of the process you must go through. Good luck with the assignment.